Hi, I'm Sherry Meyer, and today you're joining me on my Plain Air channel, and we are out in the countryside of Ohio. I live on a ranch with cows, and behind me you can see the subject that we're going to be painting today. I've been sitting here just kind of watching them, trying to decide what my composition is going to be. So I'm going to get ready to set up my easel, and I invite you to join me for this Plain Air painting. I have my easel set up and I have an idea of the composition that I'm going to do so I'm going to start with the background and then I'm going to put the cows in because they're constantly moving around and I'll just kind of keep an eye on what I think might be a good composition uh, for putting the cows in the picture. Okay, I'm going to start the process and I'm going to start with a Derwent white Pascal pencil and I'm just going to decide where my horizon line is going to be so I'm going to put it uh, about a third away up from the, the top of the painting and there's a nice um, tree line right here which is in the lower quarter of the painting and then there's a hill Let's see. there's a tree line back here and then there's a hill right here that's where all the cows are on this hill so I'm gonna make that the lower third of the painting and then this tree line is the backdrop and actually the foliage comes over to that. This is all sky back here, and there's sky holes in this tree uh, line. Lots of trunks of trees here. I've decided to uh, speed up the video so you can see the process that I use, uh, get the same effects of watching the entire video without uh, spending an hour and a half doing so. So as you can see, I, I start with the sky, and then I put in, uh, I block in all the sections of the painting. So the foreground, the background, the tree lines, and I'm putting in uh, oranges because green has a, a way of overwhelming the painting. If you don't, um, it helps break that color up and makes it look more, look more realistic. So uh, definitely I start with the background and then work toward the foreground. Now I am working on the uh, clump of trees that's uh, more in the background and I'm developing that and I use a blending stick as I lay colors in. I start from dark to light and I'm just, I, I'm just observing all the different colors that I'm seeing in that tree line and I've noticed that on the left side of the tree line it's brighter um, the yellow is a little different color than on the uh, right side of the tree line so i'm laying that in and as i lay it in and i take that blending stuff stick and kind of mess it up uh, scruff it in there and just try to make it look wispy like a tree i don't want any hard edges i keep all those edges very soft because uh, foliage is very soft you're not going to see hard edges in trees and um, so I just keep working on that, adding you know, little variations of green and yellow and brown in that tree line until I get it to look what I'm seeing there. Now you're going to have different pastel uh, colors than I have, and not any. I can't recommend any any one that's going to be that a must have because you'll find the ones that work for you the more you practice. Now I'm moving along to the uh, front tree line, and most of that is in uh, shade. So it's very dark, dark green, and I'm adding a uh, dark purple in there. I don't like to use black very often because it's so harsh, and I find that this deep purple is a perfect uh, color to use because it, it goes well with the green, it doesn't stand out, and it isn't harsh like the black is. So um, now I'm putting in the trunks of the trees uh, and branches of the trees and I'm just looking for that right color that's not too bright. The first one I picked was too bright. Now I'm, I'm finding one that's more along the lines of what I'm seeing. And there 
our sky holes if you notice me in that tree line and I want to definitely keep that blue in there so they um, so it, it reads correctly otherwise it would just be a big blob so the sky holes are very important now I'm, I'm moving along to the um, the grass and it's kind of grass and mud where the cows are currently and so I am putting that in and I'm just going back um, now I'm actually deciding, okay, it's time to put the cows in, and um, so I'm putting my first one in, and that's Mia, by the way, she's a pretty cow, she's got a lot of brown and white in her, so that makes her a great subject, I have a lot of Angus, and they're all black, they're not as interesting as far as color patterns, so I'm just looking how she's standing, and I'm capturing that now, and I've been observing since I was uh, actually creating this painting how the cows have moved around and what positions I liked in the painting. I've been thinking of that along with doing the painting. So uh, painting is it, you just keep looking and seeing new things that happen. And now uh, there's a little calf named Junie. He's the youngest in the herd and I'm putting him in. He's such an adorable little guy. He, his mother's an Angus. You can tell because he's black. His father's a Hereford. And so that's why he's got the white face. So I put him in, he's in he's, he likes to sit in the tall grass and hide right now because he's young. And, uh, but he's trying to keep up with the older, the older calves in the herd and he's doing a good job. So I'd say the most difficult part of this painting is definitely the, the cows. Uh, it's, it's always good to go out and draw some cows, let's sketch some cows and um, uh, the lighting changed you can see that there and so uh, the clouds would come out and the sun would come out and it has a it has an effect of how my painting looks in this video so if you're wondering why that happened and um, so now I'm going back and I'm reestablishing that back tree line uh, and just looking at my cow saying okay she could be tweaked a little bit more and now I'm moving on to the next cow which is a brown cow and I really like the way the light was hitting the uh, left side of that cow, so I put that one in. And we, we have about 40 cows on the hill, so I, I wasn't going to put them all in, otherwise they just look like big blobs. So I wanted to single a few out. And also I noticed there's a nice little um, patch of grass in front of the tree line that's lit by sun, and I definitely wanted to capture that, so I put that in behind the cows. So again, you notice that I'm, I'm using those big blocky pastel uh, sticks and then I'm, I fine tune it with my blending stick. Sometimes I, I use a, a pencil, but I, I refrain from doing that too much because it makes my work uh, too tight, too illustrative. Now I'm putting in, this, this is Sandy that I'm putting in now, the little, uh, she's kind of a beige cow. She's really a sweet cow. I love, love her. She's, she watches after all the, um, the calves. She's a heifer. She's not had her own yet, but she'll have her own next year. And um, so the calves always migrate toward her. They're always surrounding her because she's so good to them. Okay, and there's uh, uh, another, another calf. And I can't tell you what that one's name is because we got a couple that look like him. It might be Merlin. But anyways, um, I'm putting him in, and then I, after I get him done, I'm just going to put a couple of hints of color to the right of him to show that there's more cows on that tree line. But you won't really be able to tell that they're cows, they're just dark blobs. So, and then I'm putting a little shadow underneath those cows. You can see there, I just annotated, because when they're in a herd, they just look like dark blobs. So. With that being done, I, I'll, put, I'll take it back to the studio and just review it, and then I put a frame on it, and we're done. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and if you'd like a purchased print of this painting, framed or unframed, uh, there is a link in the description box below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you back at the easel for episode number 22.